You have now learned all three forms of the quadratic equation and how to find them. And so this week we're looking at interpreting quadratic graphs and converting between all three forms of the equation. The one thing we wanted to cover is what factored form tells us because you should know by now what standard form and vertex form tell you. So on the left, I've graphed <clears throat> the equation y equals the quantity of x minus two times x plus four. And if you notice, on the x-axis, we have points at two comma zero and negative four comma zero. And that's because when we're on the x-axis, y equals zero, right? So we can plug in a zero for y and figure out what our x, what possible x values we have. So our factored form tells us our x-intercepts. And if y equals zero, then one of these binomials, just two terms inside parentheses, one of these has to equal zero if we're multiplying two numbers and they equal zero. So we can set up an equation, zero equals x minus two times the quantity x plus four. So one of those equals zero. We can set up an equation and solve that and find that x has to equal two because two minus two equals zero and likewise negative four plus four equals zero. So what about our standard form? Well, standard form we can find easily by just multiplying uh, our factored form. And we call that expanding the equation. Uh, and some people refer to that as foiling. So we can multiply x times x, x times positive four, negative two times x, and negative two times positive four. And if we simplify that, we get our standard form, and that's x squared plus two x minus eight. So standard form, hopefully you remember that standard form gives us our y-intercept, where our parabola crosses the y-axis. You can see we cross at negative eight, and that negative eight is our c value, it is the constant. And that is because when we are on the y-axis, our x value is now zero, so I can plug in or substitute zero for my x terms, and you can see those will cancel out and all we're left with is negative eight. So standard form tells us our y-intercept. Lastly, vertex form, I know you know that vertex form tells us our vertex. And you could figure out the vertex form pretty easily by looking at this graph. You see the coordinates of the vertex, and then you can see that from the vertex to the next point up, we increase, our, our y value increases by one, uno. So our a value is there for one. But I wanna make sure you remember how to complete the square. So when I complete the square, I take my standard form and I use my first two terms to create my square. And so, but I have a blank here for the, the constant number that completes my perfect square. And I'm gonna subtract that number as well. So I do not change my equation because adding and subtracting the exact same number does not change my equation. And then my negative eight is still hanging out over here. So what value completes my perfect square? Positive two divided by two is one and one squared is one. So I add one and subtract one which cancel each other out, and I still have my negative eight, minus eight. So now I just rewrite the part in parentheses as my perfect square. It is x plus one squared, and then I combine like terms, minus one minus eight is minus nine. And our vertex form tells us our vertex, and just remember it's always minus h plus k. So since our vertex is at negative one, you can see that matches up to positive one here, and minus nine, is our k value. But not all factor, not all parabolas can be factored. If you look at these three examples, two of them have x-intercepts, the ones in red, and this black one over here has no x-intercepts. This one up here, this is a perfect square, right? Where our y value or k value is zero. This one has one intercept. This would be x plus one squared since my a value is one. This one over here has two x-intercepts. This can absolutely be factored. It has two x-intercepts and I could account for my a value and then use my factors to figure out my equation. Finally, this one, we can write this one in standard form. We can also write it in vertex form. You can see your vertex. You can figure out that your a value is one. 
but it has no x-intercept, so it cannot be factored. So just keep that in mind that not all quadratics can be factored. One last example. We can figure out all of our equations just by looking at a graph. So you have a choice. Which one of your forms is going to be easiest? I always think that vertex form is the easiest and it's going to help me figure out my A value. So my vertex is negative two, negative four, and I can tell from this point to my next point, one unit away on the x-axis, I've only increased by one, so I know my A value is one. I can figure out my vertex form. I have x plus two because it's minus h, so minus negative two is positive two x plus 2, the quantity squared, minus 4, because we're adding our k value. So from here, so now I can, since I know my a value is 1, my factored form is easy. These are my factors. So my factored form is just x times the quantity x plus 4. Because if 0 is one of my factors, then I know this is really, you could say x plus 0, but why do that? So x times x plus 4, because this is negative 4. Finally, to get standard form, I can just expand either of these equations, and I think my factored form is easiest. x times x is x squared. x times positive 4 is 4x. Okay, so we have our three forms of our equation. If I had used my vertex form, that would be, that would be a way to check my answer. I should get the exact same standard form if I expand my vertex form. Now let's talk about all the other features of our graph. Our x-intercepts, those are easy. Where we cross the x-axis, we cross at 0 and negative 4, and I could figure that out either from my graph or from my factored form. Our y-intercept, we will only ever have one of those. My y, I cross at the at zero, so my y-intercept is zero. The line of symmetry, that's the line that cuts our parabola in half. It goes through the vertex at our h value. It's a vertical line, so my line of symmetry is x equals negative two. We are only looking at a portion of this parabola. It goes on and on forever. The domain are our x values. So I have unlimited x values. My x values are all real numbers. And you could write that using infinity and negative infinity if you desired. But our domain, there is no limit to our x values. A range, remember, think about a mountain range. So something that is vertical and high ranges our y values. There, are, there is a limit to our y values. Our y values start at negative 4 and increase. Our parabola has no y values below negative 4, but it does include negative 4, so our range is y is greater than negative or equal to negative 4. Finally, our increasing interval. We read from left to right. You can see that my parabola is increasing. My y values are increasing as my x values increase on the right side. So my increasing interval is x is greater than negative 2. We don't include this point because it is the transition point. And whenever we refer to intervals, we always talk about the x values because the y values, you can see we have multiple points at our y values. So intervals, we always refer to them in terms of our x values. I hope that was helpful. Have a great day.